Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we're gonna be covering why you want a fuel pressure regulator on your car, whether you have a carbureted setup or a fuel injected setup. So, stay tuned. Now, I've been wanting to make this episode for quite some time, and I wanna talk about why you need a fuel pressure regulator, such as this one here, or this one here, installed on your Classic Mini, and what they actually do, and uh, how they can help your car run more efficiently and more effectively. So while this is going to be a technical episode about how fuel pressure regulators work and how you would install them on your car, um, I am not going to be going into every single different type of fuel pressure regulator that there is out there these days. And part of that is because it would be really boring. But the other reason is I don't know all about every single type of pressure regulator there is out there. There's a lot that I don't know about this setup, so I'm gonna share with you guys the things I do know. And if you feel like there's something that you might want to add, or maybe you wanna correct something that I mentioned in here, feel free to post that in the comment section below. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel or becoming a long-term patron of the channel, which helps me make more videos like this. Now, I have two different types of fuel pressure regulators on my bench right now. And the first one I have here is what's called a deadhead system. Now this is the type of regulator that you're probably gonna see on the majority of Classic Minis. And Classic Minis running this type of regulator generally have a low pressure and low flow fuel pump that is pumping fuel from your fuel tank through this filter regulator combination and then out to your carburetor. Now these work great and will work for most setups that have a low pressure fuel pump. Um, this is going to allow you to both filter the fuel and then this piece right here is what you do to regulate the PSI or the uh, actual pressure that's being delivered to your carburetor. Now most carburetor setups on the Mini run between two to four PSI on their carbureted systems and they are not rising rate pressures. So what's happening is you're gonna be delivered a steady pressure throughout the whole power band, not necessarily raising that pressure as the um, RPMs or the manifold pressure might change. That kind of setup is usually seen on fuel injected engines, um, which Minis did have. Minis did have a fuel injected setup um, and they also will require something a little bit more complex like that in some situations. Now, for those of you who have followed my supercharged build, I had a fuel injected setup and I converted my fuel system to both have a feed and a return line so that I could run the higher pressures required for fuel injection. Now I am going to be moving back to a carburetor due to issues with my EFI system. If you're curious about that, there should be a video popping up in the corner. And as a result, I have to kind of tweak the fuel system that I installed in the car. My Mini was a Mark I initially, and it came with an 850cc engine with a single HS2 carburetor on it. And what that meant is it had a single electric fuel pump. In my case, it had an electric fuel pump moving through a regulator similar to this one, just without the glass bowl that you see here. And that pressure was regulated with this deadhead system. Now, I have an MPI pump inside my fuel tank because I converted to a system that would accommodate a fuel injected setup. And as a result, I now need to reduce the pressure quite substantially in order to meet the new needs of the Weber carburetor I'm going to be installing, which as I understand needs about three PSI of fuel steady without any sort of rising rate as well because it is a carbureted setup too. Now you might find things on the internet. A lot of people will seem to say that you don't need a fuel pressure regulator for a carburetor or they won't benefit from a really nice fuel pressure regulator. And that, I really want to completely dispel that myth. It is really a myth. Um, providing steady, constant pressure at a specific PSI is really, really beneficial to your engine and to the way that your engine is going to perform. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing on my setup and to kind of fix the high pressure issue that I have now because the MPI tank actually can deliver up to 50 PSI of fuel pressure. And that is way, way too much for a uh, carburetor to handle. Now, some people might think you can take this single deadhead style pressure regulator, 
put it in between your fuel pump and your carburetor and it'll just work. Um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, this alone is not going to be able to reduce the pressure from the fuel tank and from your fuel pump um, down enough and keep it steady for a carbureted setup. Um, installing only this will burn your fuel pump to pieces. It, it'll just completely shorten the life of that fuel pump. In fact, it probably won't work very long at all. So that's going to bring us into what's called a bypass system. Um, now, this is a fuel pressure regulator that has a bypass and I'll get into that in just a minute, but this is going to allow me to reduce that pressure of almost 50 PSI down to the necessary 3 PSI without burning up my fuel pump and while also kind of accommodating the new fuel setup that I have already installed in the car, which is a feed and a return line. So if you do have a return line, I would definitely recommend moving to a bypass style um, fuel pressure regulator because this is going to be a little bit more effective at maintaining a stable fuel pressure than this style would be. Both of them will work um, for carburetors um, based on some of the you know, requirements that I mentioned before. So the way that this works is you have your fuel pressure regulator here. And in this specific setup that I have, this is an Aeromotive uh, fuel pressure regulator. And um, I have links to these in my description if you wanna pick one of these up for you. Um, the way that this works is, so these holes around the perimeter, the way that it works is any of these can be an inlet or an outlet for um, your fuel. So let's say we're gonna send fuel in the side here, that's gonna be coming from the pump. And then this hole over here, we're gonna send it out to the carburetor. Now, this little adjustment screw right here has a hex inside it. This is used to adjust the pressure, to set the PSI that you want it to, to run at consistently, and then the excess pressure and excess fuel is going to come out the bottom of this aeromotive regulator. And this is what's gonna be connected to the return line on my fuel pump and uh, my fuel tank setup. Now this style of pressure regulator does in fact require you to have a return line. Um, so something to keep in mind if you're gonna to wanna to install this. And you also might notice there is a small takeoff right here. This is used to increase the pressure and increase the rate um, based on manifold pressure. It's very valuable when you have things that need to increase pressure as that, um, as your RPMs and your fuel requirements increase. Um, this can be connected to a manifold. It can be adjusted for things like a turbo. Um, in my case, I don't need to increase the uh, rate at all. Um, so this is gonna be blanked off. And then I only need to use two of these perimeter ports. So I have a blocker for this one and the one that's on the back side here. So again, inlet from the pump, outlet to the carb, and then the return goes down to the return line on your fuel system. So the last thing I wanna mention about the stuff that I have here is I also have a very inexpensive fuel pressure gauge. Um, this was an Amazon special, it's nothing fancy. And this is what I'm gonna use screwed into this T-junction right here. This is gonna get connected in line on the side that is feeding the carburetor after the pressure regulator. And this is gonna allow me to measure the pressure and make sure that I have it set properly um, for the carbureted setup. And one more thing, actually, this really trick, cool fuel pressure regulator setup here that I have, um, ordinarily this would be used to regulate pressure on a deadhead setup. In my case, I'm gonna open up the pressure regulator basically all the way, and this is only gonna serve as a filter. Um, so this is gonna sit in the engine bay. I just think they look so cool um, that I'm gonna feed the fuel through this. This will give us a good idea of how much fuel and if fuel is being delivered to the carburetor. Um, and then um, this will not regulate pressure at all in my setup. Um, this will be doing all of the work for us in the pressure regulation department. So jump over here. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna connect up all of these fittings and then we'll step out to the back of the car. I'm actually gonna be installing this in the boot of the car um, where uh, everything can kind of get returned directly to the tank really easily. And then um, it shouldn't have any problem at all maintaining that pressure all the way up to the front of the car. With the three PSI, it's not very much at all.
right, so now what we're looking at is the actual uh, fuel tank. This is an SPI fuel tank. So it has the fuel pump in the top here. In an earlier style fuel tank, you'll actually have the pump outside of the tank, usually underneath the car um, or in a, the engine bay. Now, like I said, there is both a feed line here and a return line right here. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna take the feed line, connect it into the pressure regulator inlet here. We're gonna regulate that pressure down to about three PSI. This line is gonna go then in the, uh, in the direction of the carburetor. And then this bottom line right here is going to get connected to the return and simply return directly back to the tank right here in the back side of the car. Um, this is going to keep it a little bit cleaner. It's going to be up out of the way and it won't kind of tarnish the uh, classic look in the engine bay at all. Um, so I'm going to figure out how to mount this up. I think we're just going to drill it right through the, uh, the back side here, maybe up a little high just so that it's out of the way. And then with that up and out of the way, we'll be able to then test the pressure. I'll set up a little tank out here and I'll show you guys how to test that pressure. All right, so now we have this installed in a nice clean way. So this is bolted straight through the uh, backrest on the actual you know, back of the car here. Um, and, my, uh, and I've just got a bolt coming through, bolted it straight up there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now, the hardest part is going to be getting these lines to go where they need to go. Um, so we're gonna disconnect this line, we're gonna cut it, and then we're gonna attach it here. And then this return line needs to get connected here. And then we might even need a new line to run down and do the job of actually feeding the uh, front of the car. Now the nice thing about this fuel pump that sits on top like this is that you don't lose as much fuel, if really any at all, when you disconnect these lines from the underneath the car. Um, these run down to hard lines underneath the car. I'm gonna quickly disconnect those. You guys don't really need to see all that stuff. It's not that interesting. And then, we can, uh, and then we can start adjusting the pressure on this. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually set the pressure on our fuel pressure regulator. Now, the way that I'm going to be doing that is I have my all of my lines plumbed up here in the uh, boot itself. I'm gonna have a line that runs out. I've got a little fuel pressure PSI gauge right here. And then we're gonna connect it up to the Weber carburetor that I have sitting here. Um, this is gonna allow it to fill up and then it's also going to provide that back pressure that I'm looking for. Running it directly into this jar here is not gonna allow me to set the pressure effectively. Um, we do need to simulate what we're gonna be, you know, running and setting up here. So, gonna set this off to the side. It's not too important, this, we just wanna make sure that this doesn't leak, but I don't anticipate it leaking. Um, and uh, we'll be able to set the pressure over here. Now, you can adjust that fuel pressure regulator as long as it's not locked in place by hand. You can just turn the, you can just turn the top of the pressure regulator and it's actually pretty easy um, to get that pressure set. Um, and we got it down to just at three PSI, which should be perfect. Um, I am gonna turn this back on to lock it in place to make sure that I don't um, lose my setting when I lock it. And uh, then we can connect all of this up to the regular fuel system and we'll be ready to roll. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna check is the pressure that is set on this actual fuel pressure regulator um, float bowl system that we have here. Now you can see it has a nice little connection spot for my pressure gauge, um, glass float bowl. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to show you the PSI and the fuel filling it, um, but that's okay. And then we've got it connected to the Weber over here. Um, this is gonna be our final reading for today, and I'm not gonna actually attach this yet. 
because I don't know how much clearance I'm gonna have with the supercharger and everything. So um, I need to wait until I get that so I can test fit that and get it all ironed out that way. So let's flip on the fuel pressure and we'll start and we'll actually set the pressure on this one to be fully open so we're only relying on the pressure regulator in the back of the car. All right, so that is gonna wrap up the installation of the fuel pressure regulator. It's a smelly job, but it's a pretty straightforward job. Um, not too much to it. Um, there are tons of different configurations the way these things can be installed. Mine was obviously after the pump, but before the carburetor. In some setups, you actually can run this after the fuel rail if you're doing fuel injection um, or you know all sorts of different setups. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions about the way that I have this plumbed up, definitely post them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those for you guys. Also, I would have really loved to uh, you know, hook up the supercharger and the Weber and everything today, but unfortunately, that's not yet here, so we're gonna have to wait until the next episode on that one. Now, if you wanna pick up any of the stuff that I used in this episode, I have links to the pressure regulators, both the kind of classic looking one and the new one that I'm using. Um, those are in my description, and, uh, and if you use those links, they do also help support the channel because they are affiliate links. But that's going to wrap up this episode, so until the next time I see you guys, enjoy those minis, and motor on.